What's up everybody and welcome back to another David Max for Golf video where today we are diving back in to the Swing Caddy SC4. You see I just did a video on this with everything that comes in the native software with the Swing Caddy SC4. If you haven't checked that one out make sure you go and check it out but I wanted to dive into the E6 offering and also what that gives the Swing Caddy SC4, how it enhances the SC4 because it is quite a lot. In fact I actually found out that as I went through the E6 software with the Swing Caddy SC4 actually uh, starts to read your spin rates on all of your lower end clubs. So I mentioned in my previous video that you're only getting the spin rate from uh, driver basically down to 8 iron, but then anything less than that it doesn't pick it up on here. However, when I got E6, I realized that it does, which got me super, super excited. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through exactly everything that E6 offers with the Swing Caddy SE4 and what you get uh, when you purchase this from one of the stores. You simply open the box and you get one of these, which is like your E6 coupon card. It'll have your license key in there. You activate your license and then it is super simple to get set up. So let's set it up. So I'm already logged in. I've got that so you can see. I didn't have to open the Swing Caddy app. There's no connectors or anything that you need to do prior. You just simply open the app. That will connect to this automatically and then you are ready to go. What you get with it is you get the practice area and then you also get one course, which I believe is Av Aviera, Av Aviera, whatever, golf course. We'll get into that. But right now, let's go into the practice. Uh, I'm going to join as myself next and we're going to do some short chipping. Okay, so you got the chip and putt options, which when we go to next, I don't think I've actually downloaded these yet. Oh, no, I have. So the chip and putt area, we've got a 20 meter flat putt. I don't believe that that does putting. It could be proven wrong, but I don't believe it does putting. Um, we've got 50 yard long shot, 70 yard tree shot, 80 yard shot, 90 yard shot, which is about a full lob. Width. You know what, let's go 80 yards. Let's go an 80 yard shot and see how that goes. Uh, you've got your gaming options here, which you can select all of your settings as well, but we're not gonna bother about that. Let's just go tee off and see how we go hitting some 80 yard shots. We've got a 73 meter, which is pretty much a 58 degree wedge for me nice and smooth so let's see how it goes I don't know how I hit that actually to be honest with you Three 83 meters so you can hear the swing caddy is actually going to give me a number yeah a little bit long um, and what happens with those numbers and with the data from the swing caddy is E6 also uses its own algorithm so you can see that this says 77 meters of carry versus 83. The reason for that is E6 is actually taking into account the elevation. If there is any, I don't know, I didn't, che didn't see and I didn't check. Um, but there's no wind, I think 98 centimeters. So there's a meter of elevation up um, and also the algorithm that it uses, it takes the raw data from the swing caddy, puts it through its own algorithm and then spits out the numbers, which is what every third party software does. Now what spin rate did that give me? See 9,680 spin. I would say that that is pretty much bang on and yet the Swing Caddy SC4, if I throw, I don't have anything to throw it up, but I don't have a camera on there either, but it just says zero. There's no read on spin there, but I have what I would say is a very accurate reading of spin using E6. That's cool, that was not very good. So let's see if this takes the spin off, because I, I didn't hit that very good. Yeah, it's long, it's left, I pulled it. Let's see what the spin does. I'd be interested to see this. Kind of bounced into the ball a little bit. 9,500, so the spin was a little bit less, not much. Let's see if I can actually put the spin on. So trying to go through this and seeing if I can add spin, take it away, you know, how accurate is it while we're just in this chip and putt scenario. That might be short. 63, so it's short. I'm trying to call it beforehand. And I want to see what the spin does. 83, so there's less. That looks like it's spinning more. It's probably coming down the slope as well. And then there's more spin, 10,650. So I'm trying to add spin, it's adding spin. Um, you're trying to take it off, it's taking it off. So there was an added spin. Let's try and take some off now and see how that goes. I might have clipped that, that might have actually had more on. What I was trying to do is just hit a low, low punchy draw. It's obviously gone a lot further. I've got nothing close to the pin, but I'm not actually trying to get close to the pin at this stage. 7,760, so I tried to take the spin off, it's taken the spin off. I tried to add it before, it's, it's added it. I mean, the algorithm, whatever it's using, it's not measuring the spin, right? So it's not as though it's getting the spin and actually measuring the backspin, but the algorithm that it's using, in my opinion, is really very accurate. So let's actually just try and hit the distance now. 77, 77, 73. Eight 
80 meters, a little bit pulley again, and it's a little bit pulley, so I've got it lined up pretty good. The distance was good. Oh, it's going to be short. Yeah, 66. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we got it on there. We got that extra spin. I opened the face a little bit more on that just so I could swing normally and take some yards off, which is really, really cool. Now, what have we got? 9,570. Uh, yeah, I'm super stoked with that, to be honest with you. I mean, E6 with these units. And, and what I love about third-party apps and third-party software is it changes a home launch monitor like the SC4, which gives you a lot of great static data into a home golf simulator where you can see the ball flights, where you can work on spin rates with your wedges and, and do all that kind of stuff, which is super, super cool, plus course play. But what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into the driving range and we're going to check that out. All right, so I've selected 7-iron, and when I select 7-iron, it automatically changes it down here on the Swing Caddy SE4 as well, which is really, really cool. Now, the Swing Caddy has a remote to it, but if I can just change it on my phone when I'm using this simulation style uh, thing and it automatically changes it there, I think again that's another win. 7-iron here, my target distance really when I'm cold like this is about 150, 155, but we'll see how it's swinging it as we get in there. Oh, that's not great. 100. Yeah, 148, and I did feel like I pulled it left. That's where it's gone. I'll try and call these a little bit quicker for you guys so that you can see uh, what I'm saying versus what we see on E6. 148, uh, ball speed, look, that's all pretty poor. That's the first 7-9 swing, but like I said, it'll be about 150, and then it will get up as I get warm. That was nice. That might be a little right, but that was nice. Might be nice soft draw. Yeah, a little right. 160, that's a lot better. Second shot of the day, how you doing? RSS is coming to help me here at the moment. I've switched back to a ball speed, back to 121. Spin 4,930, which is what happens when I'm compressing the ball well. And I've got 160 meters of carry. Giddy up. Oh, that's a bad one. So we've got three different types of shots there. That's a very poor swing. And we've got three different reads. It would have gone straight. I just got it low and healy. So you're getting, you're getting everything. And a lot of guys, when I do these videos, they comment, they're like, Dave, this is great, but we want to see bad shots. We don't just want to go and see good shots everywhere. You're seeing bad shots, you're seeing a mixed bag here. And if I can get another good one, then we'll get into the driver. I was in the middle. 100. Yeah, 156. Six I'd say that was, that was half decent, pretty average strike, straight down the middle. Well, I'll take that, 5,080 spin, launch angles all look pretty good, and the data that you're getting is really impressive. Now, someone might say, well, you're not getting any side spin. Yes, it doesn't read side spin. It's very honest about the fact that it doesn't read side spin. So my guess is where it's getting your shot shape from is your club path. It's reading what's going on here. So in to out versus out to in, and it's generating a shot shape based on that launch direction and launch angle, okay? That was so nice. That's the one. That's the one that I need to bottle up. I was supposed to tell you where it went, but I just hit it straight, so. Okay, 164,940, 121.5. I am compressing that really well. I'm trying to add shaft lean, which is gonna take spin off, so that is definitely accurate. Let's get into the driver. All right, what you will also see is that E6 actually gives you an average line of numbers just below. So of all of those seven irons that I've just hit, um, my average is 152 meters. I had some good ones and bad ones. Average spin 5,322, and my impact is pretty good. 1.2 meters right into the driver. Hopefully, I got enough room. I'm gonna change this around a little bit. Okay, I'm a bit scared about hitting the wall here. 243 meters of carry, 2,400 spin, 235 meters of carry. I'm not swinging these super fast, and that's only 106. My normal swing speed is about 115. So if you're wondering why my distance is down from what you can normally see, that's definitely why. I've kind of got a bit of a sore back at the moment. That looks better. 
252 meters so let's see where these go like i said guys i'm not hammering them we're not going hammer and tong today so the, the distances will be a little bit shorter than normal that's not the unit that's definitely me and 3200 spin that is what typically i've been seeing in the simulator at the moment the driver is spinning really really high i'm trying to get that down um, it's just a swing thing Spin 2600, that's a little bit better, and super, super happy with that. So, ball speed 158, like I said, I'm going to repeat it again because I know someone will comment about it. If, uh, if you guys think that they're short on distance, it's definitely not. The numbers are spot on with driver and pretty much every other club uh, on GC Hawk. So, you know what, let's just rip one. Don't worry about the back, let's just rip one. Oh, it's hit. Okay, I did that really just to show you guys because maybe you wouldn't believe it, but I hit that so good. Uh, swung 112, so still not as fast as my normal 118 to 120, but 164 mile per hour ball speed, 112, 200 and, what's that say, carry? 250 meters of carry on here, 259 meters of carry on the SC4 with 2,620 spin on both. So the spin number is the exact same on both units. Um, it's just everything else and how it calculates that algorithm that changes. But let's get into some shot shaping. So I haven't actually hit this range before. I think the idea of the shot shaping range is that it's got two different fairways. So let's try with a draw first, sorry, a fade first, and hit that right fairway. That's low. It's pretty much dead straight. Let's actually hit a decent one. No, it was fading. So, let's see. 161. Mm. It's gone dead straight. I reckon that faded. Okay, let's try one more fade. It may be the side spin here that's kind of making it a bit difficult for the unit. That was definitely fading. Mm. Very slight fade, but I reckon it went further than that. Let's try the draws. The, the shot shaping on these units, where they really do come into their own and get the shot shape, being a radar unit, is you need quite a lot of space in front of you. So down on a range and, and anything like that will be perfect. Here, in an enclosed environment, it does make it a little bit more tricky, but let's see if it can hit a draw. I don't know if I hit that. Hit that bottom here. It's probably just straight. Yeah, that's probably drawing. Flush that. Yeah, it's dead straight. Okay, so it's struggling a little bit with the shot shape, but like I said, if you get this thing on a range, that's where I believe it will come into its own. If you want to see that video, like this video and comment that you want to see it on the range to see its capabilities and shot shaping, let's jump into some actual course play and see how it goes. And we are ready to go. But we are ready to rock and roll. <coughs> Might be a little right. I didn't look at the wind. No, straight. I know oh, it is a little right. Okay, we got the terrain penalty turned off, so we should be good there. <laughs> so this is the course play. I like that you get the numbers and stats pop up as well at the end. You can take that off. So we can see that we've got 74.8 meters. There is wind on there still, even though I turned it off, but that should be pretty negligible. I don't know how that... Looking pretty good. Whoa, too much spin. So this will be a player decides thing. So you can decide how many parts that you want to have per meter. For me, I have a rule like inside three meter, it's a one part outside of that. It's a two part. This is going to be a hybrid. Did not hit that well. 190, should be safe, maybe. Yeah, that's not a very good shot. Okay, that's when a layup goes wrong. You don't want to do that. 5.3 meters uphill as well. This is going to be another hybrid. Okay, need to hit this one better. It's better. Oh, sit. Hit it too good. 
But it's not a bad thing because now we get to see what the wedge game is like with the short wedges. Hmm. Okay, this seems like it's a little bit of a glitch here. So it's telling me that it's gone 15 meters of carry again, but really a distance is only 2.3. Okay, 9.5. I don't know. So I'm hitting at the right distance according to the swing caddy, but E6 is, you know what, and that's the thing with E6, it's not the actual unit, the SC4 itself. When it comes to these things, E6 has always had a little bit of a problem with chipping, whether it's the Garmin R10 or the Skytrack Plus or whatever you're trying to use. It's just never really enjoyed these short chips that well. All right, well, we're going to give ourselves a one. Oh, was it coming up and coming back? I don't know what was happening there. Sorry, I got, yeah, I don't know what was happening. I'm going to give myself a one putt there because of all the short chips. So one of the things that I would recommend is that when you connect your license, connect it to like an iPad or something bigger. I've connected it to my phone so that in later videos, the connection and licenses that I've got on my iPad, I can compare them with the same shot data. So. I did that for you guys, but really get a bigger screen so you can see exactly what's happening. 147.3. See the wind? I thought I turned the wind off and it's still saying that it's on quite a lot. Maybe that's what was happening on the last hole. Hit that good. Let's see how that wind affects it. It is pushing it around definitely, but I hit it too good. Into the water. Okay. Let's mulligan that because I want to show you something else. So what else you can do on E6, which is really, really cool, is that when you get to a hole like this, you can tap E6 and then you can go practice. And what the practice allows you to do is it allows you to hit shot after shot into a hole like this. So we've got 40 centimeters uphill, 10 mile an hour left to right with the wind. That pin is tucked right at the back. So I'm going to aim a little bit left and probably knock this eight iron down just, just a hair. Should be pretty good. Bang on the number, and oh, landed it on the number. I could probably go down to a nine and just hit a full nine. And so this is where E6 actually becomes really quite cool, is that you can get to a hole like this, even though you've only got one course, and you can just hit shot after shot into these greens. It's gonna take the best nine of my life to get there, but we're gonna give it a go. Hit that good. 139, but let's see if we get the roll up. Yeah, that's good. So you can tell that it's probably the right club there. If I just get that online a little, kind of pulled it a hair, we should be pretty good. One thirty-seven. A bit right. All right, we'll do one more and see if we can get this flush. No. I thinned it, but that's the best one so far. 138 and I thinned it. So sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. That's, that's pure. I smoked it, absolutely smoked. That is a nine iron by the way. It's just getting it right versus. Okay, so there's the course play. There's going through E6 with the Swing Caddy SC4. And like I said, it really does enhance the user experience when you've got that. Now, obviously I have the 24 seven golf enclosure here as well. You can pick one of these up and save some money by using my discount code DMAX200 from 24 seven golf. This is the BYO package. If you already have your own unit, you can get one of these. They have a whole bunch of other options as well, but use my code, save yourself a couple hundred bucks. You can have this indoors at your home. And of course the unit, can also go out on the range and do all that really, really cool stuff as well. But if you like this video, make sure you like it, comment a positive comment, tell me what you would like to see next on the Swing Caddy SC4. But this is the E6 integration, and I hope you guys liked it. Cheers, guys.